Welcome League and community members. I'm Lori Rose, president of the League of Women Voters Lake Forest Lake Bluff area, and I'm excited to welcome you to our spring 2021 Lake Bluff Candidate Forum on Zoom. The League is very grateful for your participation and for the many questions that were forwarded to us. This program is being recorded and the League claims copyright ownership of any recording or transcripts produced. Links to this forum will be posted on our website at lwv-lflb.org and on our social media pages. The League has been engaging in this work for more than 100 years. We value equity and inclusion in principle and practice, and our members include people of all genders, races, religions, political parties, and ages. We believe that the opportunity to meet and question candidates for office is of paramount importance. The nonpartisan League of Women Voters stands firm in our commitment to empower voters and defend democracy. Our commitment to these principles is honored through the sponsorship of programs such as this forum, in the creation of the Illinois Voter Guide, a nonpartisan compilation of candidates in all Illinois races, and in our support for voter registration and education programs on a variety of topics throughout the year. And now a note about informing voters. One of the questions we received after our school board candidate forum last week concerned voting across what people call party lines. At this time, I'd like to clarify that all candidates participating in all local races in the April 6th election will appear on the ballot without a party or PAC designation. While some of them may be affiliated with others, voters are permitted to vote for individual candidates from a variety of affiliations or groups and vote across quote party or PAC lines. In addition, the order on election ballots, as always, is random. Candidates affiliated by a common party or endorsement will not necessarily be located next to one another on the ballot. As a result, you may wish to record the names of candidates you would like to research or vote for as you watch the candidate forums. Before we hear from the candidates, I'd like to introduce you to a new accessibility feature that will accompany many of our public programs on Zoom. It is the option to see subtitles. Viewing subtitles may enhance your viewing experience. To activate this feature, look for a bar box marked Live Transcript CC and click on Show Subtitles. If you activate this feature and decide later that it's bothersome, you can turn it off during the program by clicking on Hide Subtitles. You should be aware that the subtitle options are features contained within the Zoom speech to text software. Neither the League of Women Voters nor the candidates are responsible for any transcription errors contained within the subtitles. We are very fortunate this evening to be assisted by an experienced moderator for today's forum. In keeping with our practice, our moderator is neither a Lake County resident nor a Lake County voter. It's my very great pleasure to introduce Kathy Tate Bradish, a very experienced moderator. She received league moderator training in the early 1990s and has been moderating league candidate debates and forums ever since that time. Kathy has been a member of the League of Women Voters of Evanston since 1988. Within the League, she has served in most board positions, including president. Kathy will introduce our candidates and explain the rules of the forum for us. And now, Kathy. Thanks so much, Lori, and I'm delighted. Thank you everyone who's attending, and thank you to everyone who is bold enough to run for office these days. If we don't get to your question, if you're one of the many residents who submitted questions, we rarely do, so don't be disappointed. We have three races tonight. They'll go in the order of library board, park district, and then village president and village trustees, which will be an interesting and combined um, combined forum. The candidates within each forum will speak in alphabetical order. They have agreed on all of the rules, including answering only the question that's in front of them. They'll have a minute and a half for each opening statement and each closing statement, and one minute to answer each question. And I might take executive privilege a few times during the forum if I think we could get more questions in if I give them uh, half a minute instead, for example. But I'll give everybody plenty of, um, I'll give everybody plenty of warning for that. So here we go with the library board. There are five candidates for the board, but Tricia Brockett and William Hayes are not able to attend. Um, candidate Graziano will give her 90 second opening first followed by candidate Shaw and then candidate Zaudi. So, candidate Graziano um, and uh, the others, yeah, candidate Zaudi and uh, here we go, candidate Sh 
uh, Shal are with us. Go ahead. All right, thank you so much. I'd like to start by saying thank you to the League of Women's Voters for hosting this forum. I'm very grateful for all of your hard work to let voters get to know all of the candidates better. Um, I'd like to start by saying my name is Jenny Graziano and I'm running for the Lake Bluff Library Board of Trustees. I moved to Lake Bluff six years ago. I have three children, Kate is six, Jimmy is five and Franny is four. I'm an avid reader and I love libraries. My children and I have spent a lot of time visiting the library to check out books as well as attending library programs such as story times, mom and me, book clubs and learning how to play chess. I feel like books and the shared space at the library are things that bring us together as a community and help us get to know our neighbors. I'm running because I wanted to support the staff and the library um, because it is such an important resource for not only my children, but for my neighbors as well. Prior to moving to Lake Bluff, I worked as a teacher in Chicago Public Schools, as well as at a nonprofit called Misericordia in the Development Office, assisting with fundraising, event planning, and community outreach. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Shaw. All right, thank you. And um, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, my name is Bonnie Shaw also running for the Lake Bluff Library Board. Um, I'm also a mom of three. Um, my children are a little older though. They're in their late teens and 20s. Um, and I've also recently retired um, after a 25 year career with AbbVie. V. Um, and during that time, I was able to um, serve in a number of different roles for the company. Um, and a lot of my experience is really quite relevant for the library board as I've learned having attended a number of um, trustee meetings over the last few months. Um, I was able to be a, a country general manager in living in Dublin, Ireland and living in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And in that time, I've had experience with internal and external audits, uh, building and grounds improvements, and also issuing requests for proposals for a whole variety of different um, goods and services. Um, I lived in Lake County a total of 20 years. I've, I've been in Lake County on two different um, rotations, if you will, with my job. And um, uh, most recently have lived in Lake Forest and the last three years roughly here in Lake Bluff. Um, I am a, I serve on the Penn State Alumni Group uh, on the Endowment Committee. And um, I, I, again, wanna thank everyone for joining tonight. I very much look forward to serving um, the community and uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters for setting up this opportunity to talk to everyone tonight. Thank you. Candidate Zaudi. Uh, thank you. My name is Matthew Zaudi. Um, as uh, for my colleagues here as well, I'm, I'm running for trustee for the Lake Bluff Library. I would thank you for inviting me to this forum and for the League of Women Voters for hosting it. My family moved to Lake Bluff from uh, Chicago about five years ago, and we knew it was a special community owing to my wife having been raised here. Um, it's exceeded our expectations and we've been very active in youth sports and community organizations. Um, with the pause of so many volunteer outlets last year, um, I decided to try something new and applied for the vacant seat with the library. Um, the library has always been a very special place for me to the extent that a library um, uh, is a place that was actually a criteria um, in my undergraduate selection. I wanted to have a library that I could be proud to study in that would be a force of attraction. And I think after the trailing 12 months, gilded stacks and musty odors of that type of library are sort of an anachronism. But our library staff and its supporters, the Friends of the, of the Lake Bluff Library chief among them have done an exemplary job this year of maintaining its service and providing opportunity for our community to use its resources. Um, but as with any uh, uh, time of change, I think um, change is going to be the only constant and we'll need to look to what systemic changes our library will experience in the years ahead coming out of this pandemic and also prepare for the longevity of the library with regard to long range planning. And I'm excited to share my vision for the, both of those with you tonight. Thank you. Um, candidate Shaw, you're going to take the first question first. Everyone will get a bite at the a first bite at the apple. Um, this question is for everyone. If ever you want me to repeat, just uh, don't be shy. So candidate Shaw, what is your motivation for seeking a term on the library board? Okay. And uh, our response time is a minute or 30 yeah. seconds? 60 One seconds. Minute. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, great question. So why run for the library board? Um, so 
B, uh, as, as others have said, libraries have held a very special place in my life from a child when I um, actually volunteered and covered for the librarian in our elementary school when she left early on Wednesdays. <laughs> um, and uh, while I've, I've lived in different places, I've always been a frequent patron of the library. Um, and I think that the library is unique in that it serves people from the age of, you know, two to 92 and really faces a important opportunity to advance in its technology, um, in how COVID has forced things to be online, streaming services, um, as well as the changing needs of our changing community. Thank you. Candidate Zaudi, you're next. Yes, um, well, my motivation for seeking the trustee position is to continue with the work that I started in, in the fall. Um, since I've joined the, the uh, library board, I've joined the finance committee. Um, I have a, a deep financial background and accounting acumen. Um, I've joined uh, the long range planning committee and I'm working actively with trustee Heitzelman and trustee Hayes to develop our long range plan as well as our cap an upcoming capital campaign. And I've reinstituted what was the previously sunset um, technology committee. And I'm working with trustee Hayes and president Meyerhoff to, um, to bring that uh, committee back to light and to set a plan and a vision for the upcoming years. Thank you, candidate Graziano. Um, thank you so much. My motivation for running for the library board is one, my love of libraries and, and my desire to preserve this wonderful resource and um, help it for my children so that they can have the same love for books that I developed from all the libraries that I've gotten to experience. I love our Lake Bluff Library. I feel it, it's such a, it's a, the, at the heart of our community. And looking at our the strategic plan that the Lake Bluff Library has put together, I feel that I have some really um, important contributions that I could help the library with. Um, I have experience with fundraising. I'm very connected to the Lake Bluff community with my children, one of my children in preschool and two of them in the elementary school. So I think that bringing that connectedness to our board of trustees could be, um, could be a wonderful asset for all of us. Thank you. Candidate Thank you. Dowdy, you'll take this question first. Do you think the current library structure and offerings are sufficient for the community? If not, what are your plans? That's a great question. I, in looking at our circulation numbers and where um, the patterns have been in terms of consumption of our assets over the past year um, is a little bit of a, of a, a hazy picture. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think um, you know we'll have to. It'll be a challenge to identify what patterns and what changes coming out of the pandemic are systemic, and which will um, kind of fade into the background. So I think, without doubt, the um, the consumption of ebooks and periodicals, as well as um, the opportunity to augment our services and our offerings with other digital mediums. Um, this dovetails with my professional career, so it's, it's an area of passion and expertise for me. Um, bringing those additional assets um, uh, to augment the existing physical assets is um, what we'll have to contemplate in the future, both with our structure and our resources. Thank you. Candidate Graziano? Thank you. Could you repeat the question one more time? Sure. Do you think the current library structure and offerings are sufficient for the community? If not, what are your plans? I think that this year has been a very challenging year for the library. And I do believe that our staff at the library has really risen to the challenge of COVID. Um, it's required a lot of creative thinking and a lot of um, on our feet kind of planning. And throughout the library has been planning for, um, for the future by increasing the digital resources that are available to all of our patrons. And that's been a wonderful resource I know that my children have used over the past year. Um, in addition, some of the programs that the library put on this year, I thought were incredibly creative, such as the Snowman Story Walk that families were able to enjoy together and that partnered the library with local businesses. These are, these are wonderful things that have come out of COVID. And I think that 
um, I'd like to see the library continue moving in this direction. And one thing I think that is important that's in our strategic plan that I would like to help with is- Thank um, you. Thank Sorry you. To wrap it. That's okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm backed up against a time that they want me to move to the next, or that I need to move to the next um, uh, uh, race. But let me give you, can, can we creatively do 45 seconds? And here is the question. Um, so do your best timekeepers, I will appreciate it. We're starting with candidate Graziano this time. Do you believe expanding access to ebook titles should be a priority? I do believe that expanding um, our digital resources is a priority. I believe that people, um, are reading in a variety of different ways, including audiobooks, ebooks, um, and it is important to continue growing our collection and allowing people access to these resources, as well as letting them know that um, the library is constantly taking a look at our numbers as far as ebook um, checkouts, and they're responding to our the community's needs, um, allowing more checkouts when, for example, during COVID than um, prior. So I do believe it's important that we continue to expand our digital resources. Thank you. Candidate Shaw? Yeah, I, I do think it's important that the library continues to meet the demands of the community. And as the community has, through COVID, become much more comfortable with online programming, perhaps also eBooks, um, even streaming services for movies, which you can go and get a, you know, a disc at the library, but, but that's also changing with, with all this online streaming services. So I do think it's important that the library continues to respond to the changing demands of the community. Um, and, you know, I, I, again, there, there, there's the child's uh, services, teen services, adult services, and really, I think one opportunity is to help our adults um, population better understand what the technology options are. Because I know my teenagers pick that up so quickly, whereas I need their help to do so. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not, I'm not alone in that. Thank you. Candidate Zaudi. Um, yeah, so I believe eBooks should be a priority, but a priority if that's what the community is telling us they need, either explicitly or implicitly. Um, so I think when we think of, when we contemplate eBooks, we don't want to confuse that with overall digital mediums, because I believe we've seen during this time that the appetite for that, as well as the diversity and the breadth, has um, really grown. And our library has done a good job, a great job to date, of availing themselves of that. We've had programs with um, academics, we've had programs with art, we've had programs with other book clubs, all of which enabled um, electronically via digital. So am I okay? The, um, I think it's, it's important for us to use data as our guide. And as our, the other candidates mentioned, let the community tell us and the circulation numbers uh, instruct us. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, timekeepers, if you would maybe count to a beat of three, leaving the change of the numbers, and I'll remind the candidates that you can um, put your cursor on the little box and move that timer box to some place where you're sure that you're able to see it. So here we go to closing arguments, 90 seconds each. We're going to go backwards. So it will be candidate Zaudi, then Shaw, then Graziano. So candidate Zaudi, your 90 second summation. Great. Well, first I'd like to start by thanking everyone for participating, the fellow uh, candidates, as well as the, the League of Women Voters and Vote Lake Bluff for, um, for creating this, this opportunity. In particular, Bev A um, was wonderful in, in making sure that I had my ducks in order to participate. I hope to continue the progress that I've made to date um, with, the, with my role on the, uh, as a trustee of the library. I'm genuinely excited about bringing a vision to technology as well as contributing on the financial and budgeting side. And most importantly, also having a long range vision. And so the long range plan, um, developing that capital campaign associated with it and maintaining our fiscal flexibility as well as our responsibility as a steward of community assets to make sure that our reserves are there for those rainy days that will eventually come and some of our physical assets that will need to be replaced. 
I'm looking forward to bringing technology to the library by starting with a benchmark of what other libraries are doing similar in size to ours, as well as leveraging some of our partners like CVI, who's recently been uh, trusted to um, replace some of our hardware, but they specialize in library services. And so it implies that they may have a, a um, an ability to share with us some of their findings as to what other community libraries of our size and with our resources are bringing to bear um, coming out of this pandemic period. I think from there, we can also take a canvas of some of our other Thank libraries you. and I look forward to hopefully serving you. Candidate Shaw. Thank you. Um, again, in, cl in closing, um, thank you for this opportunity, League of Women Voters and everyone who's tuned in. Um, again, I just a, a love of libraries and a lot of relevant experience to help shepherd the library toward uh, the future and to continue to serve our community. It is such a incredible resource for everyone, um, which has, and, and the team at the library has just done a really fantastic job being innovative during these difficult times, being flexible, agile, um, to continue to meet our needs with the curbside pickups and online trivia things. And, you know, I, I think we look forward, you know, having uh, learned uh, and gotten to know the library staff over the last number of months through the board meetings and the board themselves, you know, we really look forward to going back to providing service like we used to, and maybe even some additional things that we've learned have been learned by the library over the last 12 months. Um, it, it's been a, a real pleasure uh, to get to know the different committees that exist within the library um, and to know like the dedication and commitment that the current board members have to really making a difference in the community. I look forward to hopefully helping contribute to that effort. Thank you. Thank you, candidate Graziano. Thank you so much. I'd like to say thank you again to the League of Women Voters and to the other candidates. It's so wonderful to have so many talented people running for these positions. Um, being a reader has carried me through so many different seasons of my life and libraries have played a formative role in my life. And I felt so blessed when I moved to Lake Bluff and my kids and I could walk to our Lake Bluff library. One of our favorite activities is checking out stacks and stacks of books together. Um, and I'm grateful to have such a wonderful community resource. And I would love to have the opportunity to support them in their efforts moving forward. I think the library has done such a wonderful job over the past year, like Bonnie said and, and Matt said, of addressing the needs of the community as they change throughout the year in such an uncertain time. And I believe that the library also has some challenges um, coming up in the next few years. And one of those things that I think the board has talked about is and an aging building. And the library has done such a wonderful job of utilizing the space that they have, but um, it is important that we look at how we can support the library and the work they're doing and provide a wonderful space for that too. So um, these are some of the talents that I think I could bring to the board of trustees, my experience in community outreach as well as fundraising. Um, so I want to thank you again for having me here tonight, and I look forward to seeing all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to thank the candidates so much. As you see, you have well-prepared and dedicated people running for this position. I'm applauding on behalf of the over 100 people who are out there but silent, and we're going to move straight into the Park District Forum. So I believe our tech geniuses are going to work magic and boot people off and bring people on. And for those of you who are just joining us, let me just do a little housekeeping again. Candidates in each race are speaking in alphabetical order. Um, they have 90 seconds for their opener, one minute to answer each question, which I might tweak, and 90 seconds for their closing statement. They've agreed that there won't be any personal attacks, it goes without saying, and they'll briefly finish their sentence when the time's up card goes up. And I'm sort of eager to use that mute button, but I haven't had a chance yet. If you're interested, there's a CC live transcript button probably at the bottom of your screen. Move your cursor around. And if you're interested, click on it 
and you'll get subtitles. It's extremely cool um, and it might help, especially if you have a hearing impairment or just if you wanna see if they are better than some of the other translation services that you've seen. And if you click on it and it annoys you, just click on it again and click on hide subtitles. So our candidates are in um, alphabetical order. So I'm going to uh, call on you, candidate McDermott. We'll give the opener first. But before I get moving into this, I didn't have an opportunity to ask, um, uh, where are we here? Michelle, how do I, I have a good guess, I think, at how I say your last name, but why don't I do it right? How do I say it? Marachik. Marachik. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> You're on the first. Oh, I know, but believe me with my last name. Um, so 90 seconds for each of you. It will be McDermott, Marachik, Raymore, Reeder, Walsh, and then Weber. And I will remind you each time. So you have 90 seconds, candidate McDermott. Well, thank you very much for hosting this. Um, I'm Jerry McDermott. Uh, Donna and I moved to Lake Bluff with our family 25 years ago. Uh, raising our two youngest children in Lake Bluff has been a wonderful experience. Uh, the schools and the park district facilities were and continue to be a large part of a great life here. And they were primary reasons why we chose Lake Bluff in the first place. As our boys grew, I volunteered as a baseball and lacrosse coach. I was Boy Scout troop leader for 242. More recently, uh, I volunteered as a trustee with Union Church where I played an active role on the team organizing the fundraising for and the construction of the new manse in the courtyard on East Prospect. I currently serve on the board of uh, police and fire department. And I'm also the CMO of Multitech, a mid-sized technology company designing and manufacturing smart electromechanical devices and industrial communication equipment. Everything ranging from touch-free soap dispensers to systems that track and monitor assets like rail cars to equipment that's used um, to give uh, school districts, to help them bridge the digital divide uh, to connect kids to the internet. I believe the park district have done a great job, the board and the employees do great work uh, with the facilities, the variety of facilities that we have, the quality of the programs that we have, and they do it all on a very tight budget. There are a few villages our side offering the variety and the quality of the facilities that Lake Bluff offers. So as a board member, I will provide oversight and support Okay. Thank you. <laughs> candidate Marachik. And did, did we just, did a candidate just fall out of our forum here? I thought we'd had everyone. Never mind. We'll, we'll find out when I, when I call on them. Uh, candidate Marachik. Hi, thank you. Um, I grew up in Minnesota where I lived. I grew up in a small town. It wasn't too unlike Lake Bluff. I went to University of Minnesota where I got a degree in hydroenvironmental geology, which basically means we looked at groundwater, surface water, how it interacted with the land, but more importantly, how humans interacted with the land that impacted the water. Um, after college, I moved to Lake Forest. For about 22 years, I was a resident there. My four boys have attended between the four of them, a lot of the schools, um, they participate in the rec center programs, both in Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. My little one is now a seventh grader in the Lake Bluff Middle School. Um, prior to moving to Lake Bluff, I became a personal trainer and actually worked at the fitness center here for several years, as well as a couple other uh, clubs around the neighboring communities. And Recently, I've gotten more involved in our local trails and parks and my walk my dog all the time. We go to the beach. My son continues to <laughs> run amok in town with the pool and the beach and the sledding hill. Um, I love Lake Bluff for that, what it offers the kids and what the kids can access. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Raymore. Hi, thanks very much. And thanks to the League of Women Voters. Really appreciate the opportunity to let the community know about the candidates. Um, I've been a resident of Lake Bluff for 33 years. I raised my kids here and from the get go, we use the park district. We use them for preschool, the summer my kids swam. My son still works in sailing after sailing with the um, 
park district program and helping teach there. So we've used the park district and all the parks continuously. My um, grandchildren are now living in town and so I'm starting the cycle all over again. So I really get an opportunity to see the services that the park district provides. Professionally, I've worked in healthcare, um, recently retired, but I've worked in small and large facilities in many, many aspects within healthcare was very involved in all the um, consolidation of the hospitals and healthcare in the um, last 20 years. So I come with a strength of budgeting, difficult budgeting um, and process improvement and organizational leadership change. So I think those are the primary skills I think I have that will bring to the park district um, and really hope that we can continue um, having a good park district and I hope to be able to um, help with that process. So that's my opening. Thank you. Candidate Reader. <clears throat> Sorry. Good evening, everyone. And um, thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting us tonight. Um, our family has been in Lake Bluff since 2013, and our children have grown up here since they were very little. Um, we have two children. Elizabeth is 13 and Grace is 11. And uh, frankly, you know, the park district has been such an integral part of, of our lives, you know, since, since we've moved here. We have enjoyed so many programs, the Lake Bluff School of Dance, the youth sailing program, tennis, uh, paddle, golf, basketball, the swim team, you name it, we've done it. Um, obviously, many sunny days spent at the pool and at the beach. Um, so I am I'm passionate about uh, continuing to build our community and provide our community with all that the Park District has to offer. Um, as far as wanting to volunteer um, as a commissioner, um, our family has always considered uh, community involvement to be an important part of um, being part of any community. And it's been my honor to serve as a volunteer on se several Lake Bluff organizations, including um, I'm a current board member and PTO liaison for the Lake Bluff Alliance for Excellence. I was a finance, the, the finance trustee for uh, the Union Church of Lake Bluff. Um, I was a member of the middle school renovation committee and I was treasurer of the newcomers club when we first moved here. Um, professionally, oh, I guess my time's up. Thank you, I'm not getting to use the button, my finger's itchy, candidate Walsh. Thank you so much for hosting this tonight. Um, it's really, it's been great to see, you know, people on all, on all the races and the one you hosted Sunday, really, really great stuff. Um, so my name is Nikki Walsh. I'm running for Park District Commissioner. I've lived in Lake Bluff since 2005. Um, I grew up in Lake Forest, so nearby community, you know, so know the area well for, for years and years. I have three kids. I have um, one in every school. I have one in the elementary, one in the middle school, and one at the high school. Um, I started working on a joint task force to, for the park district in 2014. It was uh, working with Lake Forest to try to determine if there were shared services that we could work together on. Worked on that task force with the park district for about a year on and off. And then I have since worked on a committee to the board. Um, I was on the, I joined the facilities and programs committee in 2015 and worked on that till 2019 when I was appointed to be a board member. Since then I've been a board member. Um, my family uses the park district like crazy, which is why I was interested in, in you know, joining the board in the first place. Um, kids the ages that I have, they, we, we do every activity. All of us are at the beach, we're playing paddle, we're, my kids went to the preschool. Um, you know, really we, we, we're, we're using it. I always say, I wanna put my volunteer time where, you know, where we spend our time. And so it's a super important resource to us. Um, professionally, I work in digital marketing and other boards that I'm on, I'm on the uh, PTO board for the middle school and then also the APT board for the high school. Thank you. Candidate Weber. Hi, thank you so much for having us tonight. Uh, my name is Scott Weber. My wife, Kara and I have lived in Lake Bluff since 2013. Uh, we have three children, seven, four, and one. Um, our seven-year-old and three-year-old uh, have, or four-year-old, sorry, should uh, I should say, have been uh, in the involved in the park district, going to the preschool. Our one-year-old will will go there soon. Um, I wanted to get involved with the park district just because, like uh, Nikki said, our kids use the park district all the time. Um, they visit 
all the parks when it was warm the other day uh we wanted to hit all the parks in lake bluff a kind of a tour to park and uh and and they just love it go to the beach go to the pool use all the programs uh in the summertime um i got involved two years ago um i was part of the citizens committee um i served on the finance committee there um last year i joined the board of uh board of commissioners uh when a vacancy came up um Professionally, uh, I have been a independent trader uh, for eight years now. Um, recently transitioned to be um, director of finance for a small manufacturing company. Um, I have used that um, for, uh, to help the finance committee kind of navigate through the challenges that COVID has presented for us. Um, and I look forward to serving in the future. Thank you. Um, candidate Maracek, you're going to take the first question first. And let me just say to our um, tech person, uh, candidate Walsh keeps falling out of our forum here. So maybe the next time she comes on, you could, um, oh, here, here we go. <laughs> She's back. I wonder if you could, um, let me just ask, candidate Walsh, are you doing okay there or should I give you the tech person's phone number? Sorry, let me. Sorry, you're muted. No, I'm totally actually very technologically savvy. <laughs> I'm at a hotel and I think there's some issues. There's, it's really windy. And so I think there's something going on. Okay, nothing we can do to help. No, thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, so here we are, candidate Maracek. Uh, why do you want to participate on the board? What impact do you think your participation in particular would have? 60 seconds. Thank you. Um, everyone so far has mentioned our children and how, how much our kids participate in the programs and in the park district, the facilities, but I also know how important it is to our older community and how offer programs for them and space as well. Um, I would, I think it's, for me, it's important to make sure we're reaching everybody in the community and hearing all their wishes, their concerns, finding ways to draw every age group, every demographic in to the community. There are some big issues, as we all know, coming up here in the next few years. I think I have some um, education, some experience um, that can help contribute to maybe fixing or solving and finding some solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Raymore. Thank you. Um, I, I think this, as Michelle said, we've all used the park district. I agree with her. Some of the things that really came out in some of the surveys that have done in the past was access to open space and walking space. So it's not just a facility, it's the parks. Um, our ravine park along Sylvan and Ravine was the first park for the park, for the park district back in the twenties. And it was considered a botanic garden for the village. And um, there's things we can do to entice people to get back into some of these open spaces because that's what they're longing for. It's more than just walking in the sidewalks in Lake Bluff. So I think as a member of the Lake Bluff Open Lands, um, I agree with that open space concept. And I think there's a way to bridge information that um, collaborate with Lake Bluff Open Lands and the Park District to make more awareness for the people that want to use the open space. And um, we've done some collaboration. There is some currently going on between Lake Bluff Open Lands and the Park District, and I can see more. Thank you. Candidate Reeder? Um, as a, a tenured uh, certified financial planner with about 25 years of experience, I would um, hope to use that um, experience in working with the Park District on overcoming some of the COVID-19 related uh, budget gaps and helping to bring back uh, the programs as best we can and putting ourselves in an even better uh, financial position. Um, I would hope that I'd like to contribute that financial experience also in dealing with the other major issues that um, our Park District is dealing with, such as the uh, beach erosion, issues as well as the uh, golf course as we continue to look for long range plans for those items. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so I think I have the unique uh, opportunity of having kids that are active participants of the park district, myself that's an active participant and you know, paddle and various things at the park district. 
the experience of having been on the board for, you know, a bit, as well as marketing expertise, which I think is something that the park district, you know, definitely underutilizes. I think all of the programs are fantastic. I think all of the, you know, resources are, you know, fantastic staff, everything's great, but I think, you know, we, we under market and that's something I've been trying to push, you know, while I've been a board member. Thank you. Candidate Weber. I'm sorry, it's been a little bit since uh, I heard the question. Would you mind repeating it? Sure. Um, why do you want to participate on the board? When, what impact do you think your participation in particular would have? Well, I think the biggest reason I, I wanted to participate on the board is because, um, you know, my, my grandfather, honestly, was like one of my biggest influences in my life. And he served on his um, long-term planning committee and finance committee um, and actually was mayor of a small town in, in Connecticut for a while. And um, you know, once we had kids and, and moved to Lake Bluff, I know I saw the community involvement and said, okay, how can I best utilize my own uh, skill set um, to help? Um, and so what I really wanted to, to join the finance committee and determine how we could actually provide all the programs and resources that we do on a budget of, for a population of 6,000 or 7,000 people. Um, I think that the, the current executive director and superintendent of programs do a fantastic job. Um, but like we said, every single year, it's, it's, we're really running at a nice edge. And uh, so we need to continue to be on top of that going forward. Thank you. Candidate McDermott. Thank you. Uh, I agree with what everyone has said about enjoying the, part, enjoying the facilities and using the facilities. I think the... Um, uh, I, I think the people who are on the board right now have done a great job and the, and, and, and the employers are doing a great job. I think the long-term thinking uh, where I tend to really think I could help would be around bringing some collaboration around looking at the uh, um, things like the bluff and the beach erosion that need a collaborative effort between the village and it needs, as um, uh, I forget who said it, it needs some marketing help on that to be able to take a look at it. My objective would be to try to help us get a long-term plan, both the long-term physical plan, what it's gonna look like, and then the long-term financial plan, how we can afford it. Because it's an asset that somebody has to do something about. And I wouldn't wanna be on a board that would kick that one down the road. You know, We really wanna have be able to get that one um, teed up so that we have a, a solid plan over the next five or six years. Thank you. Sure. Uh so candidate Raymore, you're going to take this question first. Is the park district meeting the community's needs or should other services be added? Interesting question. Um, meeting the community's needs. They've done several surveys. There was one in 20, 2009 and another one in 2017. Um, from a statistical standpoint, they were a little bit disappointing in that they, we didn't get a really good representation of the population. I think one of them was 10%, one was 20%. Um, so they're struggling to get that information from what the, the population needs. Um, do I know if there's something missing? No. I do know that resoundingly, the beach is the number one, the jewel of the community, as everyone says. And I think we'll miss something as Mc, um, Commissioner McDermott said, or potential, um, in that this is our gem and we really can't kick the can down the road. We really need to address that. So it's hard to know exactly what the community wants because we haven't had really good data, but uh, it's pretty resounding that the beach is number one. Thank you. Candidate Reader. Um, as far as the park district meeting our community needs, um, I, would like, I would like to think that um, based on all that we have to offer that we meet several needs of, of the community. Um, I agree with uh, what another candidate said in that we need to address not only for our kids, but for all, all generations to offer, offer things for everyone. Um, but I'd like to say that community feedback is key. So if there is an improvement or a program or something like that, that we should evolve, I, I'd like to think that we're very good at listening to community feedback and acting on it. Mm -hmm. um, I would also agree as far as um, a, a whole community, the beach is something that almost everyone uses on a regular basis. So um, as far as continuing to focus on that project and um, find long-term solutions that should continue to be a focus. 
Thank you. Candidate Welch. Oh, whoops. As soon as she comes back, <laughs> I'll repeat the question. Let's hope she pops back in. Um, Candidate Weber. Yes. Um, I think the park district is meeting the needs of the community right now. Um, especially over the past 12 months, um, having a new executive director in place, um, our superintendent of programming and parks um, have done a great job uh, doing as much as they can with the limited resources or uh, limited resources of the past year um, that they've been given um, and adjusting programming accordingly. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I can't tell you the number of hours that we all spent as a board last year trying to figure out what programming could be under the various guidelines. Um, one thing I, I will note is that um, back in December, um, the park district jumped on a, a short opportunity that we had to collaborate with a construction company who was doing some project at the beach uh, to get a head start and get some attractive pricing um, to take a step to re restore the beach. So it's something that the park district is actively trying to do right now um, in terms of a very long-term solution. That's something that we're working hard to do and something that we need to do. Thank you. Candidate McDermott. I think, um, you know, I, I think the, the, the Park District is offering a great variety of pro programs and I think um, they're really meeting the, uh, the needs of the community. Uh, I think to, to Susan's point, if you don't get, um, if you ask people and you don't get a lot of responses, uh, that probably means that they're happy. And particularly in Lake Bluff, uh, if people were not happy and they wanted more things, uh, they'd, be, they'd be asking for them. Um, we've got such a wide variety for such a small, small budget and for such a small uh, group. I think we're doing a, a wonderful job with it. I think the, um, the focus should really be, you know, as I said before, the focus should be on a first, just bouncing back from the pandemic and the initial steps that the park district had take all look very good. And secondly, to get real focus on a long-term plan around erosion of the bluff before that, before, before it really gets to be a, a big issue. And I think the steps it took so far this last year were great. You know, taking advantage of that opportunity was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, candidate Marachek. Um, I think our park district has done a phenomenal job with the budget we have for a long time. Um, the last comprehensive survey was in 2017. Two things jumped out at me when I read that. One, that one of the highest priorities for our residents were more open space walking trails. That surprised me, I have to admit. Um, so that, that, that caught my attention. And the other one was half of the community uses the rec center and the park and the fitness center, but the most, um, there was a strong interest in adult programming. It felt like there was some feedback there that what are we doing again to serve that older community? And I think that's important. We have to keep that in mind. We have to provide for every age group, indoors and out. Thank you. Um, candidate Reader, you take this question first. How do you propose we fund Sunrise Park and beach infrastructure improvements? Well, I know that there's already been extensive work done and um, in, in how to fund that project. And I know that uh, there's been uh, a bond issue explored as well as partnering with other organizations and seeking grants. Um, and so I think that we need to consider all avenues of funding to support a very expensive project that is absolutely necessary for our community. So um, as a potential commissioner, one of my main focuses would be to see what we can do to partner with as many organizations that make sense to make that happen. Okay, thank you. Um, candidate Weber. Well, the, uh, the good news is that the, the top of the beach is going to look great. Um, you know, by the middle of the summer, um, we received a $350,000 grant um, from the state of Illinois and ground will be broken on that soon, um, right in front where you have a lot of the bikes that get parked. Um, there's going to be some uh, pavers and uh, kind of beautify the park a little bit. But the real question is, what do we do about uh, beach erosion and the elevated lake levels? Um, we had uh, um, AECOM, the engineering company come and give a survey and present three different options ranging from $3 million to about $5.5 million on the high side. Um, 
And uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have the, the budget right now um, to fund that project. And we don't have the capacity uh, for a bond issue of that size for the next three to four years. So it is going to be upon us to find uh, partnerships within the community, whether it be the village um, or private partnerships to try and make this happen. Thank you. Candidate Walsh, can you hear me? Oh, she popped out again. Um, so where, where are we? C Candidate McDermott. Thank you. Uh, I think the, um, the first thing that I would do would be to focus on what the plan is, right? And it, it, first, of, again, you guys have done a great job. You know, everything out there has been re very well done. The, uh, but I think it's getting to the point where you set the objective, right? So the objective is one of those three plans, right? And just start to build the understanding around those plans within the whole community so that people start to understand it because it's not gonna be a one or two year deal. It's gonna take a while to get, first of all, to rally the troops around it and get everybody believing and seeing what the future looks like. And the future, you know, I'm not, you know, this isn't about next year or the year after the year after. This is, a, this is about 10, 20, 30 years from now, what it's like. So whether, whether we get the funding for it this year, you get the funding for it in three years, you have to have a long-term plan and it's gotta kind of start with a vision that people can get their heads around. And the vision has to be, you know, just what that thing's gonna look like and how it's gonna save the bluff because the, Thank you. Sure. Um, candidate Morachik. Uh, everybody has, a fortunate, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you financial people out there, the ones who really have to crunch the numbers to get some of this to, to work for everybody. Um, and I agree with everything you were saying about the bonds, the grants, the refer, you know, the, the possible donations, working with as many partners as we possibly can. It's expensive, it's complex. It's gonna, it's gonna, yeah, it's going to be a tricky issue to fund. Um, I also agree it's a long-term plan and having our community understand the difference between saving the beach which, and saving the bluff. Um, what does that look like? How much work will it take to get there? And what is a realistic long-term solution? Thank you. Candidate Remor. I just like to say that I think everyone's right on target with this. Um, I've done quite a bit of investigation. I'm also at the beach every single day and um, it is a long-term plan. The erosion is extremely important if we value our beach. Um, it looks like the beach levels are going down this year. They're down about 10 inches so far. So that may buy us a little bit more time to put in our capital campaign, to get a referendum, whatever we need to do to also build collaborate or awareness and agreement with the community. We've got to have community support on this. I think um, personally, what's a little bit concerning to me is that short term, we have some abrupt changes that have happened on the beach recently with the concrete coming fast and furious. We lost the dog beach, but it's getting worse. It's coming down to the middle beach into the south beach and we're getting chunks of concrete. And I think we're gonna to have to have a short term plan for that because that is the difference between saving the bluff and saving the beach. The beach is what the people see and what it's very palpable. And I think we have to address that. Thank you. Um, candidate Weber, you'll take this, this last question first. Um, is there a need or a plan to enhance the golf course or the golf facilities? Good question. Um, so we have three years left on our Golf Visions lease. Um, for the, uh, the community feedback that we get is that Golf Visions has done a very nice job um, managing the golf course. Um, it was in good shape this summer, good year to play. Um, but we do have to make some capital investments over the next five years. Part of our agreement with them is that we have to pay for all capital expenses in excess of $25,000 and the lawnmowers they use and um, all the facilities that they have there are in need of repair. Um, so at, it, at this time, uh, it's something that the park district is not planning to do. Um, we can push those another three years down the road um, and that can give us a little bit of time um, before that lease comes up uh, to address what resources we have um, to fund the Bluff and Beach project. Thank you. Candidate McDermott? Could you repeat the question? Sure. 
Is there a need or plan to enhance the golf course or the golf facilities? Yeah, I think the, uh, it's, um, I play at least once a week during the summer and uh, at, at, the, uh, at the course. So I get, I get to see what the course looks like. And is there a need to um, up, upgrade the course or, or uh, do continue to do maintenance and maybe improve the maintenance a little bit? Uh, yeah, that's, I think the answer is, on that one is yes. Uh, it, I don't think that's, it needs some major enhancement. You know, you know the, the clubhouse doesn't need to be reworked or something like that. But the, the course does need to be maintained. I mean, it's like maintaining your, uh, your house or your yard. You, have to just, you can't let things get uh, run down even though it is, a, uh, it is an expense and I'm sure that's gonna be a difficult one to, uh, to fund. Thank you. Um, candidate Maracek. Um, I have never golfed a day in my life. So when it comes to the issue of the golf course, I'm gonna rely heavily upon other people's insight, their experience, their opinions, their wishes for the golf course. Um, I will have to take the lead off other people on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Raymour. I do golf. Um, I am on the course. I am not an avid one, um, like Candidate McDermott, but um, I, I personally don't know of anything. I know that since they have outsourced the management of it to a private company, um, what I've heard from the board is that they're basically waiting for that to see how they go, how the finances are, how the revenue is. Um, when you look at the surveys, it's fairly low on the um, survey, but that does that may mean that the people that use it aren't answering the survey. So um, it's hard to say. That's about all I can say for it. But um, I think down the road, three years, they'll have to make some decisions. Thank you. Candidate Reader. Thank you. Um, I, I am personally a big fan of the golf course. I don't golf a lot myself, but I love the fact that my kids were able to take golf lessons there. And I, I love the fact that it is something that the entire community can use, people of all ages. And I also noted that the golf course got a lot of use. This is sort of separate, but um, so what I'd love to see from the golf course is um, more marketing. So I'd love to see us put together a plan to bring in more revenue the, for the golf course so it can start to support itself. Um, the contract with Golf Visions is up in 2023. So as a commissioner, I know we'd be looking hard at, um, you know, that's kind of right around the corner, what we can do to continue to maintain them or um, find a better to long-term solution. But I would love to see more people out there golfing. I'd love for um, that golf course to be more of a self-sustaining um, part of our community. Thank you. Well, that concludes the questions. We're going to go to everyone's concluding remarks. You have 90 seconds. I'm going to start with candidate Weber and we're going to go backwards. So it's gonna be back up my list. Now you're not looking at my list, so I will call on you, but you'll go in reverse order. So you're not just following all the same people you did before. So 90 seconds, candidate Weber. First, I wanna say thank you to the League of Women Voters uh, for having us all on tonight. Um, it's pretty evident from, uh, from the candidates and from the community as a whole uh, that the park district is of, of vital importance to this community and it's something that uh, people actively use. It had, literally has something for everyone. Um, and as a commissioner, it's been an honor and a privilege to, to serve uh, and to see what resources get used the most um, what, uh, and what can go, be better going forward. Um, I think we do have a lot of big things on our plate that we need to address. Um, and having served for the past two years, I have some familiarity with those issues. Um, and I th think it's gonna be a little bit hard to, to get up to speed, uh, quite honestly, because we do have the beach and we do have this golf course. Uh, and not only that, we have the day-to-day -day operations um, that we still have to manage at the same time. Um, and so I have, a flexible schedule enough to allow, uh, you know, three to five hours a week uh, to devote to that. Uh, and not only that, I hope to serve uh, a, a part of the community that that's, uh, tends to get overlooked. And that's the, uh, the, the younger uh, subset of the community that's, that seems to be uh, coming in. Um, so I want to make sure that the people whose kids are in preschool and actively using the programming uh, have a, uh, really have a representative. 
Thank you. Candidate Reader, 90 seconds. Thank you. Um, and thank you for having us tonight. I appreciate it. Um, so definitely following on from that, um, the, you know, the Park District is such an important part of our community, um, services so many of us and so many great memories for a lot of our families as well. Um, I would very much welcome the opportunity to continue to serve our community as a commissioner and uh, contribute my um, financial background to helping us um, work through the issues that came about from the pandemic. So um, help us to rebuild our programming and already build upon the excellent work that's already been done by the park district, the employees and the commissioner. Uh, commissioners, as well as continue to tackle these, you know, very, you know, significant issues um, that are here for um, immediate consideration. So thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 2020 really brought about a greater appreciation for Lake Bluff to me. I've always loved this town and the park district and the village. But I got a chance when the pandemic struck to volunteer for the park district as a beach monitor. And we would monitor the people going to the beach. We had our little clickers and we counted everybody and we had to hold people back if there were too many people on the beach. And the whole purpose for me was to make sure that we could continue to keep the beach open. It was a wonderful experience. I got to know a lot of the people that work in the park district. I got to know neighbors and have conversations as I'm waiting and holding them and closing, keeping them off the beach. And it made me realize I really do love this community. It's time to give back. I have no special part of the community. All of the park district, I think, is wonderful services. I would love to see all of it preserved. Park district has a lot of challenges financially in the future and physically with the beach. And I would love the opportunity to be able to serve. Thank you. Candidate Maracek. Thank you for tonight. Um, thank you for running these forums. Um, my experience here in town the last five years has been only positive. Um, I worked at the park district at, at the fitness center prior to being a resident. And it, you could just feel the sense of community within the fitness center. People cleaned their machines after each other. They knew each other's names. The, the, the staff knew all of us. We knew all of them. Um, I continue to be a member at the fitness center. Um, one thing in my experience with community involvement, I know it's hard to make everybody happy all the time, but it sounds like all of you here tonight, everybody has an open mind. I hope I can be part of that team as we look forward to different challenges. I think rebounding from COVID will be not only hard, but I think it will be really exciting. There might be new opportunities. Like Sue said, you found a new appreciation for this town, this community. We th see things differently. We use our space, we use our time differently. And this is kind of an exciting, an exciting time for the park district to meet those needs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Candidate McDermott. Well, thank you again for hosting this. Um, you know, just listen to all the stories and what everybody was saying to bring back the memories. The, um, I can remember being at the fitness center the day it opened at 5 a.m. with a couple other people waiting to get in and how much the fitness center has changed you know what it's offering you know before that we didn't have a fitness center right and I think about other things that we're doing you know the way the village came together and saved the golf course um, I think about the same story with the beach even though I do all that other stuff the, I'm a water person I spend every every day I'm in the water uh, I've been doing it for years. I swim from here, either to Lake Sh uh, Shore Acres or down to Lake Forest. I've watched the beach and our beach. I've watched other people's beaches. I've watched what's happened along the shore. And the one thing we know is regardless of water level changes, ups and downs and all that, but regardless of that, the things that don't change are waves and wind. And as long as we have waves and wind that we'll always have on Lake Michigan, we are gonna have erosion. And therefore we need to get you know, I get a little, I've gotten a little passionate about that because I think we need to just raise the level of understanding for people about what happens because I've seen it in other locations where, you know, all of a sudden it's not that a beach is gone, the land is gone, you know, and, and when the bluff starts going, the bluff starts going. The next thing that goes is the is Sunrise Park and next thing that goes is Sunrise Avenue. So, you know, I'm just trying to think about it 
Um, I may be the eldest one on this group, but I'm thinking the longest in the future and trying to think about what it's like, you know, 30, 40 years from now. Thank you. Thank you. So I am applauding as loudly as I can on behalf of your audience of thousands. Um, and thank you so much. We're going to uh, go right into the village president and board of trustees race, which is going to be a combined race after about a three minute break so that people can be again kicked out and, and brought back in. So thank you so much. I think you're all going to be made participants and we will welcome the new candidates in about three minutes. I think I'm just waiting for candidates Charlo, Charlo and Meyer to have their videos on. Um, 
or let me know if I'm mistaken about that. Uh, well, ma'am, uh, this is Bill Meyer. If you can hear me, my video is blocked by the host, it tells me. Okay. I'm sorry. I was just waiting for you to review the ground rules. But oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Um, here we are at the combined forum for village president and uh, board of trustees. Uh, if I make mistakes in how I do the order and things, I'm sure somebody's going to be very happy to help me out. Uh, for those of you just joining us, the candidates in each race are speaking in alphabetical order within the candidates for president and the candidates for trustees. They'll each have 90 seconds for their opener, one minute to answer each question, 90 seconds for their closing statement. They've agreed there won't be any personal attacks and that they will briefly finish their sentence when the time's up card goes up. By the way, I love those cards. When they come in, you sort of expect a player piano to start in a silent movie or something. I don't know who made them, but they're very nice. Um, if you're interested, there's a CC um, live transcript button somewhere on your device probably at the bottom. If you click on it, you'll get automatic subtitling. If you like it, keep it. It's kind of fun. If it annoys you, click again and you can do hide subtitles. So we're going to start with our two candidates for president. And, um, oh, and I need to say that unfortunately, um, oh, now I've got this written down. Candidate Aaron Toll isn't able to join us, but I'm not sure which race he was going to be in, but he's not here and his name isn't on my list. I'm sorry, and in any case, at the very last minute, he was unable to join us. So um, candidate Charlotte, you have 90 seconds to give your opening statement first. Uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters for this event. My name is Regis Charlot and I'm running for the Lake Bluff Village President. I moved to Lake Bluff over 25 years ago and I'm married to Leanne. We have two children who both have gone through the Lake Bluff schools. It has been a wonderful experience for us. I believe my background in both business and volunteering in the community will be helpful to me as village president. I hold two master's degree, one in innovation and engineering and one in computer science. Uh, shortly before moving to Lake Bluff, my partners and I built an organization that today employs over 400 people. I recently retired and I have been able to give more time to our community. Uh, Leon and I believe in getting involved, and over the last 15 years, we have volunteered in many different ways in town. Leon has served on the Lake Bluff uh, School Board for 10 years, and I've been volunteering with AYSO, Fox Nation, Indian Gas and Princesses, Lake Bluff Youth Baseball, Girl Scout and Cub Scouts, and I'm currently Assistant Scoutmaster and a treasurer for the Lake Bluff Boy Scout Troop 42. I also volunteer as compound director with the Lake Bluff Yacht Club. I currently serve as a village trustee, enjoy the collaboration with the other trustees, including Bill Myers, Trustee Myers, and I truly enjoy interacting with residents and business owners. I look forward to continue serving on the board and giving back to Lake Bluff, and I hope you will consider voting for me as village president. Thank you very much. Thank you. Candidate Meyer. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Meyer, and I'm seeking your vote for Lake Bluff village president. Now, thank you first to the League and its volunteers for hosting this forum so that the voters will be better prepared to choose. And thank you to everyone attending. You're taking time out of your evening to be part of the democratic process, and that is so important. Now, after 10 years of service on the Village Board, I've come to learn that volunteerism benefits all of us in Lake Bluff. Now, I've learned a lot in that decade, had successes, gained perspective, gained institutional knowledge and a lot of experience. And it's time for me uh, to deploy that experience for you. As your next village president, my guiding principle is that this is your village. You deserve an open and responsive village government. You deserve impartiality and a dedication to bringing people together even and especially when they disagree. You deserve a government that does not take as its sovereign privilege raising your taxes. As your next village president, I will never forget that we are spending your money. And you deserve a leader who will work across the lines that may separate us to find the path to unite us in overcoming some of the greatest challenges we face like stormwater, stone bridge, and fostering economic growth. I look forward tonight to answering your questions and thank you. Ma'am, I can't hear you. You are muted. Muted myself to cough, sorry. Um, candidate Meyer, you're taking this first question first. Um, yes. 
specific leadership skills will you bring to the role of village president? Yes, thank you. Um, experience counts and you have to be ready for this job and my credentials and my experience prove it. I have a decade long strong record on the village board dealing with practically every important issue we face from finance to public safety, to zoning uh, and more. Um, I have 30 years of law practice, civil and criminal in diverse areas, leading teams, solving the toughest of problems. I have an MBA from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business with electives and experienced in advanced corporate finance and ethics. And among other business ventures and uh, experience, I'm a consultant, counsel, and investor currently in a company of artificial intelligence that's dedicated to making our schools safer through technology that identifies threats. I've raised two children in Lake Bluff. I know what a special place this is, and I'm uniquely positioned to understand and address these challenges. And most of all, throughout, I've demonstrated character, I've demonstrated fairness, I stand on my record, and I look forward to serving. Thank you. Candidate Charlotte. Thank you. The, my career has been a very interesting way of having leadership over people that have a mind of their own. We created knowledge. We, I basically had the chance to lead extremely smart people. And we managed to build a company that went and changed the world. And so leadership actually gets very interesting in trying to build, trying to maintain, trying to have people having uh, having their own values and having a contribution to this world. And I believe that type of leadership also applies to Lake Bluff. If we take the, the, the zoning issues we have in Lake Bluff, for example, we need to first keep the interest of the people and the neighbors and the, the neighboring community. We need to preserve process transparency. We need to be absolutely transparent to what is around us. And we must have a community-wide discussion. I believe that good leadership and good stewardship of our good stewardship of our community is uh, is consensus in the whole community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Candidate Charlot. You'll take this question first. What will you do to encourage constructive discussion among residents? This is a great question. Thank you. Um, I think, I believe the only way we can achieve consensus is to gather people, all people to actually to uh, in, um, in, a constructive, in a constructive discussion. We have a few issues and what I have seen is louder voice prevailing the discussion. This is not acceptable. We need to come together as a group. We need, we love the spirit of Lake Bluff. We need to be, to be together to resolve these issues. I live in Lake Bluff because I smile at people on the street and people smile back at me. We should keep that same spirit to drive our community. Thank you. Candidate Meyer. Thank you. Uh, in terms of constructive discussion, I think actions will speak louder than words. Uh, the path to bring Lake Bluff together in something that is constructive is inclusion and it is participation. And there is no better means of that than through our volunteer tradition. I will invite to participate in our uh, new administration, everybody who is willing, all the citizens who are out there, are out there who wanna uh, volunteer, even and especially those with divergent viewpoints. We need this to make progress. If we're all agreeing on everything, we'll have an echo chamber that gets nothing done. Now we have five volunteer candidates for village board and three slots open. When I'm elected village president, any of those candidates I pledge who are not elected but who are willing, I'd like to ask to serve in meaningful volunteer roles. And I would say to everybody in the audience, with volunteerism being so important to us, please come forward, participate, be part of the discussion. Your voice is important. And as your next village president, I will make sure that you are part of that discussion. Thank you. We're going to bring in the trustee candidates now. Welcome everyone. And uh, candidate Brian, let's let's be sure candidate Ryder um, is coming in, but uh, that's okay for the moment. Um, candidate Brian, you'll give your opening statement first. You have 90 seconds. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Kate Brian. And before I start, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight so that we can address all of the issues that are top of mind for all of you. 
Um, I'm really proud to say that I'm a third generation Lake Bluff resident. My grandparents lived here in the 30s and 40s and my mom and dad moved here with me and my sister in 1971. And I started school at uh, East School and then went to the junior high and graduated from Lake Forest High School. So it's been a quick 50 years, but uh, it's given me a really unique perspective on Lake Bluff and I'm proud to call it my hometown. Uh, the real reason I'm running though is my passion for Lake Bluff issues. I've attended hundreds of hours of meetings at the village board level, the PCZBA, the Historic Preservation Commission, and the Architectural Board of Review on subjects ranging from Stonebridge to Block 3 to historic preservation uh, and myriad issues in between. And it's given me a great perspective and solidified my belief that being involved uh, is the best way to make change happen, positive change happen. Um, my professional background is I'm a lawyer and currently I run a food pantry based in Knollwood that services the food insecure in our area. But most of all, I would be privileged and honored to serve this community because I have gotten so much from it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name is Mickey Collins. I've been a resident of Lake Bluff for 28 years, and we raised three children here. I'm an architect by profession, and I also have a master's degree in civil engineering. I was a vice president at a major international architecture and engineering firm. And in that position, I led many complex challenging projects from the initial goal setting phase to the final completion of construction. I also served for 15 years on the Lake Bluff Zoning Board. For such a small community, Lake Bluff is faced with quite a few contentious issues, and I hope to contribute to a better way to address them. The process required for a successful architectural project is instructive because many often conflicting goals must be resolved in a cooperative way. First and foremost, the time to address any issue is early before a final path is chosen. That is when all viewpoints um, can be gathered and common goals can be determined. Then multiple solutions can be suggested and the best of them selected. In Lake Bluff, we have a tendency to develop things um, without early resident input. And then we present them for, for what is essentially kind of an up and down um, approval. And that often leads to contentious opposition. A more open process can seem time consuming and difficult, but in the end, it is the best outcome. Thank you. Candidate Fisher. Good evening, and I want to thank the League of Women Voters, Madam Moderator, and my fellow candidates for this uh, long standing nonpartisan tradition that is so crucial to our process. I'm quite honored to be a part of this evening's event. My name is Taryn Fisher. I am running for trustee for the Village Board. I am an attorney. I am a managing partner of the law firm Sage Council, where I represent uh, families in uh, family law crisis. Essentially, I'm a divorce attorney. I'm also a, a mediator, and I am proud of the advocacy that I do for families in their hardest points of, of life. I think I can bring some of that skill set to the board because as many of my uh, fellow candidates have mentioned, the, the village has had some hard times and some contentions. And the best way to address those issues is through future focused collaboration. And that's what my wheelhouse is. Um, I've had lots of experience in leadership positions. I have sat on a number of boards. I was the chair of the Chicago Bar Association's YLS Women in Law Committee. I've been chair of, uh, I was chair of CNE, which is a, a, a social justice and social service uh, organization that served the whole North Shore. And I led that um, organization through some very transitional times through uh, to some great successes. Uh, I am also a mother of two children, one at the elementary school and one at the junior high. Thank and you. I'm excited to give back to my community. Thank you. Candidate Ryder. Good evening. Let me start by saying that the Lake Bluff, Lake Forest uh, League of Women Voters is a gem. And it's one of the things that makes this, um, this town great. And um, 
I really appreciate their willingness to serve us for these candidate forums, as well as year round, making sure that we're educated voters. I've lived in Lake Bluff for 20 years. And during that 20 years, I've raised three children here and my husband and I live here um, and intend to live here, uh, retire here. Uh, during that 20 years, I've also worked. I've worked downtown as a lead attorney for a company and I uh, was managed <clears throat> a, a, a budget and 20 or so employees um, as part of my job. In addition, though, I also serve on two not-for-profit boards in leadership positions. And I've served on those in long-standing roles for those positions. But most significant and the reason that I'm here today is I served for eight years on the District 65 school board and had the best experience that one can have in a community, really contributing to the success of that school. We, went, we were able to build the middle school or rebuild the middle school and that was very rewarding. And so with that experience, I believe I'm ready to serve the village. Thank you. Now we're going to go to the combined question section. So both candidates for president and for trustee will all answer these. Um, I know somebody will pull me up short if I get the order a little bit wrong, but we're going to start with candidate Collins. You're going to take the first question first. And um, here it is. What are your top three priorities and how would you accomplish them? 60 seconds. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, my top priority um, is to make sure that we have an open proactive process to address our issues. And I did mention that in my opening statement. Um, it's very important to me that we include resident input, that we listen to the residents. Um, and also that's important when it comes to physical change, which kind of uh, leads to two other priorities of mine, probably influenced by my background as an architect. Um, we need more development in the village for two reasons. One, to bring additional revenue to reduce the tax burden, and then also to provide more housing options for empty nesters, young professionals, and single households. And I believe that development um, should maintain and enhance the small town character of Lake Bluff. Waiting for developers to propose the perfect solution is not effective. And I think municipalities must take an active role from the start to get the kind of development that we want, we should create a vision first. Thank you. Candidate Fisher. I realize my time is gonna go fast. So I wanna hit, first of all, I just wanna say to candidate Collins, everything you just said is so inspiring and it's spot on. We really do need to keep, uh, so my first priority is maintaining the integrity of what we love about Lake Bluff. And I, I loved what candidate Briant said, about she's she's a multi-generational member of a multi-generational family. How cool is this? That there are all of these Lake Bluff families that are coming back. So we have kids growing up and coming back and wanting to raise their kids. That's me. I grew up in the area. I went to the high school and was really excited to come back. How are we gonna maintain that integrity and character of Lake Bluff? Well, we have to keep providing options so that these families aren't boxed out, priced out, that there is diverse housing. We need to address infrastructure. The stormwater issue deeply impacted me and my neighborhood. The property value in my neighborhood and my house uh, was impacted. So we need to keep looking at that. Time's up, I'll, I'll work it in later. Candidate Ryder. Yes. I think the major issue that we're going to have to confront in the very near term is the infrastructure issues that um, Taryn just mentioned, the stormwater um, costs of, this, of really remediating the stormwater issues in the town is going to be significant. So I think that we have to address that issue, which means the second priority, perhaps the first priority has to be financial management. In order for us to be able to do all the work that needs to be done and to assist perhaps the uh, park district in shoring up the, the, the bluff as well, um, we've got to have creative solutions to our financial needs. 
we do need to look at a utility fee, I believe, in order to be able to fund the, um, the stormwater work that needs to be done. And third, my third priority is really civility. I um, think that we get caught up in side issues and we lose ourselves in some of the side issues. So thank you. Thank you. Candidate Charlo. Thank you. So my top three concerns are first our economic economic development. Um, when I became trust village trustee, I spent a lot of time visiting business owners, asking how the village could be a good partners to them. The what makes us special is our sense of community. Uh, people want to, want to visit Lake Bluff. People want to 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 live here, and so. My thought is, in order to raise our economic status, in order to bring more revenue to the community, we need to have Lake Bluff become a destination community. People want to come to visit our restaurant, people want to come and visit our businesses. That's number one. Number two is we have issues of infrastructure in the village. We have water issues. Water issues are actually of three different kinds. We have storm water issues. Uh, the cost is actually pretty significant. We are, we are getting flooded. Houses are getting flooded. We need to remediate that. Number two is we have issues of water delivery. Our infrastructure is 100 years old for our water mains. Last week, we had two breaks, okay? What do we do about that? The past 15 years have been where we have been looking at improving this. I'm done. Thank you. Candidate Meyer. Thank you. Uh, my list is economic development, Stonebridge, and storm water. Number one, for economic development, I will form an economic development task force with diverse viewpoints and talents welcome. It will have a mandate to identify and foster fresh ideas for economic growth. We have a business park that has had great successes. We have to find new growth and welcome new uses out there being responsive to business. We have a central business district that in the midst of the pandemic and its challenges is vibrant and will benefit from our continuing support. It's through that economic growth that we can alleviate the burden on all of our property taxes. Number two is Stonebridge. It is a problem. We need a fresh perspective we need a solution outside the port system. One of my first acts will be to open a dialogue with the owners to solve this problem. We take it from there to the public forum for creativity and consensus. And I think as everybody else has mentioned, stormwater is something that is a significant issue here. We need to address it and with community and expert input, find the solution for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Brion. Thank you. Um, my three top priorities are economic viability for the long term. And when I say that, I mean looking down the, the line 30 years, not just the next five. And for me, I would like to focus um, as much on uh, the business park as we do on the central business district. I think there's a lot of untapped potential there that could net the village a lot of revenue. So we should be focusing on that as well. I also think that uh, the process is, uh, is key and what um, Mickey Collins said at the beginning of this was accurate. We need to make sure everybody feels as though they can participate in a meaningful way uh, so that they are part of the decision and not just um, part of something that's happening uh, as a sort of formality. And finally, I really obviously agree with the stormwater. The question is how do we pay for it and do we do uh, these uh, infrastructure repairs in a piecemeal fashion, or do we do it in one big chunk? Thanks. Thank you. Um, candidate Fisher, you're going to take this question first. And whenever it starts general, always some of the specific questions people have touched on a little bit. Um, so here's the question. What steps should the village take to resolve the Stonebridge development situation? Oh. You know, we had a really interesting conversation last week, and I've been asking a lot of my neighbors, particularly the neighbors who live right there along the, where the fence used to be of Stonebridge, and it's tricky. You know, here's the thing. It, 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 it's, um, it's a major disappointment, right? We're all let down by the developers and the current owners of the property. It is a private property right now. Um, I think what we need to do is stay really focused, uh, future focused on maintaining the integrity of that front con conservation. Um, I would hate to see development expand rather than contract. I would love to see us um, go down to this, the 
a less dense plan for whatever development might eventually happen there. Um, I'd like to see that the developers who currently own the property are held accountable. Um, but I do think we have to have some real realistic conversations about the truth of, of maintaining the buildings. Thank you. Candidate Ryder. As um, Candidate Meyer mentioned, I think um, it would be a ideal to, to try to resolve this outside the courtroom, but there is at least one issue that's pending in the courts that I think is probably going to need to get resolved before we can really move forward. Um, maybe leave it to a lawyer to, to rely on the, the courts, but um, there is a claim they brought against us claiming that the current PRD is terminable at will. And that issue is central because should it be term terminable at will, it can, upon their decision, go back to an E1, um, an estate one uh, zoning. And that changes the layout of the issue entirely. So when I look at it, I look at what I would think of as a, as a lawyer. I'd want that issue resolved one way or another before I made another step forward. Thank you. Candidate Charlo. Thank you. When I go into a decision, my first thought is how this, this will improve the quality of our life in our community, in, of our life in our community. I became a trustee because I love our community. And I'm very disappointed with the, the, the high density that was approved in this development. It should have never been approved. Uh, many impacts on our community, impact on schools, impacts on the traffic on Green Bay Road. I learned a lot by talking to the neighbors and People have an agreement that it should have never been done. Another issue is taxes. Um, we have a possibility of 50 children. Uh, the, um, our, um, um, our elementary school has a capacity for 20 children. Each child costs $19,000 per year. We will only get $6,000 per year per child given those taxes. It's not, it's not great for our community. Thank you. Candidate Meyer. In the last few weeks, I've had extensive discussions with our citizens and with others, people who know this property, know this problem, and they want to help. I've learned a lot, and with Stonebridge, nothing will be easy. It's a complicated problem. Like I alluded to before, the first step when I'm elected is to pick up the phone, even drive to Virginia if I have to, and open up a dialogue with Peter Kite. We need this problem out of the courts. We need it into productive discussion. And I'm not so sure that I want to leave it to the court system. After 30 years of litigation, I know what an uncertainty and what an imperfect tool that can be. But what's important is we need to put aside the enmity. We have to foster understanding. We have to find a common ground and then take the issue to the public forum where it belongs in an open and transparent process to solve this problem, get this property back on the productive tax rolls and give some people a great place to live. Uh, through consensus, we can achieve that and make this the productive property that it can be. Thank you. Candidate Brian. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I agree with uh, Bill that the first thing to do is open up a dialogue with Peter Kite, who's the owner developer of Stonebridge. It's really unfortunate that for the last 15 years, nothing has happened and the village unfortunately has lost millions of dollars in property tax revenue that we badly need. But it is also true what Susan said, which is that uh, because of the ongoing litigation, there's really not much that we can do presently. But I am of the opinion that no stone should go unturned once the litigation is resolved because this is the number one development opportunity that we currently have in the village. And the density and what happens to the manor house and the carriage house is up for debate. And obviously we need to engage residents to make sure that whatever we do, we have thoroughly explored every opportunity. But the first thing to do is once the litigation is solved, we open up a dialogue with the owner so we can move forward and realize revenue eventually. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Collins. Unmute. I'm sorry. 
Um, it's hard to come in at the end of this discussion because a lot of good points have been made already and I'm not an attorney, so I have to bow to all the legal lines here that have already um, pointed out the difficulties we face. Um, one of the, the things that I do see there, if we get a fresh start after we've had um, a renewal of the dialogue with the owner, is that the um, existing loop road that's there with the cul-de-sacs would be um, perfect for another development that's very much like Armor Woods, which is um, clustered housing that is very popular with empty nesters. And that's just a huge need in our community. So um, that is, I think, would be just an ideal um, way to, to recast that development if we get that chance. Thank you. Candidate Ryder, you take this question first. Sure. This is share your views on zoning in Lake Bluff. <laughs> um, we have a, a detailed and specific zoning code in place currently. And in, in addition to the zoning code, um, which designates each, each location as uh, residential, obviously, or uh, estate residential or industrial central business district, we have a tool. Um, two tools, I think, but one is the um, PRD, the, uh, hmm, I'm sure somebody can give me that, uh, that uh, residential district, it's a um, planned residential district, um, the PRD program, uh, through which you can reach an agreement for something quite flexible. And that was not successfully thus far used in the case of Stonebridge. And it can be used successfully elsewhere as well. I think we have to um, pay attention to our planned residential development. I think we have to build consensus around what a good development looks like. Thank you. Candidate Charlo. Well, um, zoning is a subject that can be fraught with um, lively discussion in Lake Bluff, especially if you look at my uh, Facebook account. Um, <laughs> The Lake Bluff is a, is a fun community. We love our community. We also have very strong voices. I'm in favor of democracy. That is, we need to first keep in the interest of the neighborhood community in mind. We need to make sure that we are, we are Lake Bluff and we keep the spirit of Lake Bluff. But we also need to preserve process transparency, preserving the community trust and we need to actually have the voice of a whole community being heard. We need to establish consensus. If it comes down to it, we need to have a referendum. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Meyer. Thank you. Uh, for zoning, one of our first priorities, one of the things we must always be looking to is, of course, preserving the character of the community. That's one of the primary things behind zoning. We all call Lake Bluff our home. We came here because of its unique character and we need to preserve that first and foremost. Uh, zoning, however, has to also be flexible for terms of utility and opportunity. I look to the business park, for example. As we move into a post-COVID world, there will be no new uses, new patterns of living, uh, commuting will change. I'd like to be flexible and responsive to these, uh, to these new phenomenon that we will have in the post COVID world and particularly in the business park, uh, take opportunities there that will be pro-business. Another important thing to say about zoning is uh, certainly flexibility in housing for lifestyles, accessory dwelling units are a great example of this. The board is currently considering that something that allows uh, people in their golden years and those just starting out to be on the same lot as their family. Something I'd look, like to look into and thank you. Thank you. Candidate Brion. Thank you. Uh, zoning should be flexible, that's true. And I think that we need to continue to look at every time we're faced with a zoning question, sort of in concentric circles, how it affects uh, residents nearby, if there are any, block three being a good example. And uh, so, and all of the central business district and any of the plans that we have for that. Whereas when we look at something like the business park in the Waukegan Road corridor, we have different considerations and a lot more flexibility, which is why I think there you can get into conversations about development or redevelopment in that case that can be uh, less contentious and 
the possibilities are endless because the zoning out there is going to be more flexible. So really zoning goes hand in hand with economic development, but it also has to work well, as Bill said, to uh, maintain the character of this village for the foreseeable future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Collins. Um, well, I would not have served for 15 years on the zoning board. <laughs> I wasn't rather passionate about zoning. Um, it, it's a very powerful um, form of law that, that just shapes our communities. And um, I see a couple areas where zoning is quite important at the moment. Um, so block three was controversial. Um, the three-story condo building proposed three different times um, in our CBD, that was really a zoning issue where, and I felt that we should maintain the two-story um, scale of our downtown. Um, accessory dwelling units, I am for them, um, as long as we don't change the bulk ordinances, the, the control we have on the heights and on the allowed area. Um, that's something I think people should pay a little more attention to because um, tall coach houses in the rear of yards are under discussion right now. Thank you. Candidate Fisher. I want to start by saying hats off to candidate Charlo for the levity. Uh, he's taken some heat in conversations about zoning and I think he's done it in stride with um, with uh, uh, integrity. He's been honest about his his uh, opinions and that to me show some very strong leadership. Look, I, I'm thrilled to hear a conversation about flexibility and zoning because what all candidates have acknowledged and I'm at the tail end of this discussion so I will try not to be repetitive. All candidates have acknowledged that we have some big ticket assets that need funding and we do need to be flexible in considering all options on how are we going to sustain the, the character and integrity of our town? How are we going to pay for the infrastructure that if we don't address, we're going to have a lot more issues than just a few, you know, angry neighbors, we're going to have um, a much larger impact on the community as a whole. One thing we didn't, I'll stop, I'll stop there. Thank you. Um, candidate Brion, you take this question first. What are the challenges and opportunities for addressing stormwater in Lake Bluff? Well, certainly the challenges are the aging infrastructure. As Reed just pointed out earlier, some of it is 100 years old. Um, the scope of the project is also a challenge. Uh, in the winter 2020 on the bluff, the president's message uh, indicated that engineers had looked at it and estimated uh, $30 million to fix everything. Um, and that's a large number. So then we talk about the stormwater utility fee versus a referendum and how we're going to pay for this. So I think that those are the primary questions. And of course, the other thing that we need to consider is how can we reduce the amount of stormwater going into the system in the first place through the use of green spaces, rain gardens, and other um, processes that reduce the, the flow uh, and the stress on the system. Um, and I think those are some good places to start. Thank you. Candidate Collins. Um, yes, stormwater is an issue that you hear about all the time when you talk to residents in Lake Bluff. And the village has actually been very proactive. They have done a, a very comprehensive study that was just recently posted on the village website. And I suggest everybody check it out. Um, the cost of the um, prescribed fixes um, totals between 31 and 37 million, depending on options that, that are selected. So very critical decisions are ahead of us. And the storm uh, water fee has been mentioned as one way of funding that work. Um, what I would suggest, because storm sewers have a long lifetime and very low maintenance cost, if we do a, a stormwater fee, I think it should sunset once these projects have been paid for. That way we are not um, continually charging residents for stormwater. Thank you. Candidate Fisher. 
So as much as I enjoyed uh, watching folks kayak under the viaduct throughout the last 10 years of storms, um, it's been devastating to watch my neighborhood slowly erode and fall underwater. My beautiful backyard that drew me to the house that I first purchased in 2009 when I moved here from the city, uh, the, the backyard is, is a swamp. Um, I lived on West Sheridan Place, so as, as some of you may know, that block floods quite a bit. Um, what I don't want to see and what one of the reasons I'm here and want a place on this board is that we don't pass the buck. Now there's a lot of discussions about what um, the state is, is and is not responsible for specifically with the viaduct, which is, there's kind of two separate issues we're talking about stormwater and the viaduct. Um, we need to be proactive right now. This is not an issue that we can sit back on our laurels and wait for the next uh, board or in administration to look at. Thank you. Candidate Ryder. Yes. So we have some unique challenges uh, with stormwater and, and just some of those uh, have to do with the age of the infrastructure, but other communities also have a, a aging in infrastructure as well. We also have a very clay-like soil that does not absorb the water particularly quickly. And so water stands longer than it might in another kind of soil type. And we also have quite a bit, at least in the, uh, some of these populated areas, a lot of impervious surface. And so back to the zoning question, that is one reason why zoning is so important is that we have to maintain the bulk. As, as Nikki said, we must maintain, um, even with ADUs, we need to keep it under, bulk, under the uh, FAR. Um, and we must reduce the amount of impervious surface. When we do eventually develop Stonebridge, that's going to be no, a, a very important process as making sure that we keep the, the uh, impervious surface limited. Thank you. Um, candidate Charlotte. I first considered running for a uh, trustee when our house, our first house in Lake Bluff was flooded twice. We lost our garden, we lost trees, we lost bushes. The basic, tru the basic truth is storms of a hundred year storms are occurring every two years and they have gone 33% in volume of water in our village. The, the problem is we have a hundred year infrastructure that is crumbling and until um, about 15 years ago, we were not even considering that. So our, the, we have a problem with storm water. Um, we also have a problem with uh, providing water to our residents. Our um, water mains are crumbling. So it's about $40 million right there. The, second, the next thing we have an issue is, this is actually an ownership of the state, the viaduct. The viaduct is also failing on us. And so the opportunity we have is, uh, we need to go and address that at once. And we can do that. And this is not a, a when, this is not an if, this is a when. Uh, and my sense is we cannot kick that down the road anymore. We need to be extremely proactive with utility fee, uh, water utility fee, for example. Thank you. Candidate Meyer. We can't live in Lake Bluff without suffering that we are having significant devastating storms every year or two. The village has spent over a million dollars in recent years on infrastructure improvements. Now, some of the problems, like a stretch of West Sheridan Place, have been addressed, but there is much more work remaining. It's a long-term problem that we have to study and that we have to solve together. There is no magic bullet in a stormwater utility fee and what is essentially a new tax on our citizens. The stormwater utility tax has the merit of being able to allocate the economic burden proportional the user burden on the system. So I may support it when we learn more about what it will be in its final form. But this I can promise that if we have to put a new burden on you, the taxpayers, we'll be sure that you get maximum value delivered in solving this problem. This will be a top three priority for me when elected village president. And I will be looking for the fix that solves this, gener this problem for generations to come. I agree with everybody, we can't kick this can down the road. Thank you. So um, I've been asked to get us out of here by 9.15 at the latest. So I'm backing us up. This will be our last question. If anybody wants to say what she said, that would be fine with me. Um, here's the question. <laughs> Candidate Charlo, you take this question first. What are your goals for commercial and residential development in Lake Bluff? 
So it's a very interesting question. The one of the ways to actually um, raise the the appearance of our community and to have our community becoming a destination community is to actually improve the way our city is perceived. The first thing I learned by talking to businesses uh, on, on our um, uh, central business district was we don't have enough parking. The next thing I, I, I and the, basically the village has engaged to change the parking. I think we need to do a bit more than that. The second thing is I'm European. We like to eat outside. So one of the amazing things to me for COVID was, during COVID was, everybody was outside, everybody was dining together. We should extend that program. We should basically bring people, be, uh, have a leg bluff being a, um, a destination community. The thing also we're missing beside all the leg, for, leg forest, leg bluff, uh, um, the economic development and the village actually working very hard for us is for businesses to come together. Um, we need to, Thank you. Just trigger that again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, candidate Meyer. Thank you. Uh, for commercial development, it consistent with the character of our community is essential to our future and essential to our providing the services and the infrastructure that our citizens deserve without increasing the property tax burden. Um, with residential development, we have a challenge in four square miles of developed neighborhoods. Residential development in Lake Bluff is largely constrained. Now we must always be attuned to the cost of services and the burden on the infrastructure. But that being said, we have opportunities to make Lake Bluff home to more people who can share what we enjoy. For residential development, the obvious big issue is Stonebridge. We've spoken to that. We have to get it out of the courts into productive use and there's a lot of work to be done. Um, for commercial development, as I mentioned after the election, we'll form an economic development task force uh, that is going to aim as its goal, finding new growth, welcoming new uses, giving new perspective and being of course responsive to business. So Lake Bluff with, well, thank you, I'll wrap up. There's a lot we can accomplish together and let's share Lake Bluff as a great place it is. Thank you, candidate Brion. Thank you. Uh, for commercial development, I will reiterate what I said earlier, which is I think we really need to focus on the um, business park of the L1 district. I think there's so much untapped potential out there, um, but that would require someone really focusing on that in a business development capacity uh, because it is a, a heavy lift. But I really think that that has the potential to bring us a lot of revenue. Um, some parcels there are undeveloped uh, when one considers the highest and best use for them. As far as residential goes, it's obvious that Stonebridge is top of mind for all of us and probably everyone in the community because it has the potential to generate so much revenue. But the other thing that was mentioned briefly by Mickey was accessory dwelling units. And I think that's a way to fill the gap uh, and provide housing, especially for seniors, so that they can age in place here in Lake Bluff, which is extremely important to me since my dad lived here until he passed away in 2014. So that's what I would focus on. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate. Collins. I'm sorry, did, which, what, what did you say? I couldn't hear. Did you say Collins? Yes, sorry, yes. Okay, all right. Um, well, we've had a, a tendency in recent years to focus um, all economic development ideas on our very small central business district in block three specifically. And the, the opportunities are there, but they're limited. Um, there are other opportunities and, and Kate has mentioned this a topic I've been advocating for a couple years, um, anytime I get the chance is that there is great potential in our light industrial business park, the area south of Heinen's, uh, east of um, Pasquese. It could really be redeveloped as a mixed use area with uh, residential offices, restaurants, shops, um, and a hotel could be there. And a hotel is actually um, a great generator of taxes because you can impose a hospitality tax that is not paid by residents, it's paid by visitors. Thank you. Candidate Fisher. So many interesting, good, exciting ideas. And that's why I'm really, um, really inspired by the idea of collaboration. Um, listen to all these great minds coming together. 
generating ideas I had never even thought about um, a hotel, which candidate Collins, uh, excellent idea. Um, look, I, I again want to emphasize looking, uh, be, being uh, expanding our view so that we're not just focused on block three because I think it's a red herring. I think I love the idea of exploring the North Corridor, uh, the businesses that are unincorporated right now on 176. I think there's some potential there that is absolutely worth exploring and investigating, having more conversations with those business owners, collaborating, bringing us all together to uh, a, a tackle the, the concept of supporting our Lake Bluff small businesses, which frankly downtown are, I, I feel that they're kind of lagging. We need to give them their, our support. Thank you. Candidate Ryder? I'll touch on the residential part of that question as many people have talked about the commercial. Um, I think there are really two, two fundamental things to say about the, um, the residential. We need to be more creative in terms of bringing new types of housing forward. Um, Kate and um, Mickey are both right. We have talked about ADUs. I think they're absolutely imperative. But I think that the reason that we really need to focus on those types of things is it's part of our fabric. It's part of our community and the community that the, the people who already live here, giving them opportunities, giving them opportunities to live in their home the way they would like to live in the home with the people they'd like to live there. And that is a similar reason to the reason that I am actually for expanding upon short-term rentals. I believe, even though that's a hot topic, I believe that that ought to be up to the property owner. Thank you. Well, we're going to start concluding statements now. Everyone has 90 seconds. We're going to start at the um, end of the list and go back up to the top. So we will start with candidate Ryder. And now we're going to go in the reverse order of which you've been answering questions. Great. I was asked recently why I wanted to serve on the board in this political climate, why, why throw yourself into a, any kind of controversy like this. And um, I come back to a couple of things. First, the period that I spent, uh, the eight years that I spent on the school board were some of the most rewarding experiences of my life. We were able to do so much good for, the, for that school system in the short period we were there. And we were able to refinance during a five-year period over $22 million in bond that were pay, helping, that were taken out to pay for the, the elementary school and then were um, again needed to pay for the middle school. We were able to finance that and save over $4.1 million for the taxpayers over the course of the life of those bonds. And you get the sense of completion when you see a new building standing there that you're able to help, um, help come into to, uh, existence. I have a knack for diving into issues and understanding them sort of from the ground up um, I am tenacious and really willing to um, continue at an issue until we can find a solution. And I think there's various things that we have kind of landed with a sort of solution, which, which still needs some more work. And I'm a person who is willing to continue to work on an issue until it's truly resolved. Thank you. Candidate Fisher. Thank you. I want to say thank you again to League of Women Voters, all of the candidates. What a pleasure it was to hear all of your voices and see your faces. Some of you I haven't met yet. Thanks. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that I grew up here. I was raised by a mother whose motto was be the change you want to see in the world. It was drilled into me and I watched her volunteer endlessly for civic service, community service. There was never a time that she wasn't giving back to the community because it gave so much to us. And that's uh, that's what I feel. And that is in my heart and soul. That's why I serve on the finance committee for the park district right now. Um, and I'm incredibly proud of the work over the last year that we did together in steering and navigating through this difficult time to continue providing services for the community, even uh, at the park district at, at a time where people were really socially distancing and but really needing those services. Um, you know, so 
why am I here? I'm, and, and why would I throw my hat in the ring at a time like this, as Susan said? Yes, Lake Bluff has been through a terrible time as our whole nation has. It's time to turn that corner. I am thick skinned as a divorce attorney. I'm ready for the vitriol and the difficult decisions, but I'm also, like I said, a mediator. My, my happy place is working together with different voices, difficult decision-making to find the common good, to stay future focused, to find that goal that we can all be excited about. So I, I look forward to your support and to serving the community. Thank you, candidate Collins. Well, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. Um, these forums are, are an invaluable service to our community every election year, but especially this one when we have so many contested positions. And I wanna thank all the residents who've taken time to actually listen to this forum for over two hours. Um, your interest in learning about all of the candidates and their opinions shows how much you also care about our community. I've spent many hours recently walking Lake Bluff and ringing doorbells and trying to meet as many residents as possible and I've had some great conversations. We are fortunate to have so many knowledgeable and talented residents who are willing to contribute their voices and often their time to help build a better community. Um, I wanna embrace that participation and not just politely listen to residents but to actually listen and respond. My hope is to bring a more proactive and collaborative process. I'm committed to remaining open-minded and I'm not a member of a slate or endorsed by a political party. If I'm elected as trustee, I, as I hope to be, <laughs> I look forward to working with whomever the voters choose as village president and as fellow trustees. Thank you. Thank you, candidate Brion. Thank you. We are so privileged to have this group of people and the candidates that appeared before us uh, running for office. Um, wow, what a, what a great group of people and what a great community. Um, I'm somewhat emotional about this because this is uh, the place my mother really wanted to come home to. And I'm so glad she did uh, because it was a privilege uh, literally and figuratively to grow up here and it would be an honor to serve the community as a trustee and I've had a lot of conversations with people over the years as I've attended all of these meetings um, or just hanging out at Prairie Espresso or in Avasi or other places and I was encouraged to run because I believe that the people that asked me you know hey can can you run for trustee you you're our voice they want to be a part of the solution and they feel like uh, I can be a voice for them. Some people don't feel comfortable coming to public meetings, but I really love it. I love being a party to the solution, to the process. I love the process and it would be uh, just great to be able to give back to the community that's given me so much for so many years. So I would be honored to have your support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been said that one voice can change a room. And if one voice can change a room, then it can change a city, it can change a state, it can change a nation, even change the world. Now, those are President Obama's words, not mine. But as your next village president, I will make sure that your voice is heard because a true leader knows how important your voice is, each and every one of you. Now, indeed, I will suggest to you that what makes a thriving community is people who are valued, respected, and heard, and who participate on a nonpartisan basis to solve real-world problems. As your next village president, I will always aim high and care deeply about this village and its citizens. Now, I will be grateful for your vote, but it only starts there. I will be grateful for your participation, your voice, your volunteerism, your input. It will be amazing what we can do together in these next four years. And throughout all of it, we will take the high road. We will make character count. We will make people count. Now, after this forum, and again, thanks to everybody who's organized it and participated. I'm grateful for everybody having this opportunity to have their voices heard. But now this, as this forum draws to a close, this election belongs to you, the people. So please vote 
and thank you for your time and attention tonight. Thank you. Candidate Charlo. Thank you. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for this forum. Uh, it is very impressive to me as a process of democracy. I am in this chair because I love Lake Bluff and I'm willing to de dedicate my time to this community. Uh, Lake Bluff is my community of adoption. I came here 25 years ago and uh, it was an amazing feeling. Uh, the concept of bringing people together is not an empty concept to me. My whole career was about to bring people with different view and viewpoints and to arrive to a, a product of quality, uh, talking about um, a, a, a comp um, an organization that is uh, geared towards such a product. We need to bring unity and consensus in Leg Bluff. We need to bring a respectful discourse in Leg Bluff. And we need to get things done. It is most important. People are relying on us for that. Again, my experience as a business leader is to bring people together. And I believe that I'm uniquely qualified to be your next village president in Leg Bluff. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm getting us out of here by 9.15, I promise. I hope everyone can stick around for this next few minutes because we've got important thank yous. But first of all, I have, have such admiration for people who will run for office these days. You are really the people in the arena. So everybody out there in your kitchens or your bedrooms or hiding in your bathroom or wherever you're listening to this from, give a really hearty round of applause uh, for these candidates. So many thanks to the League of Women Voters of Lake Forest, Lake Bluff area. You have no idea behind the scenes how extremely well organized they are. And League members everywhere roll up our sleeves and we're the grassroots um, of democracy in so many villages and cities around the country. But just think about this forum. It was set up, candidates were all invited, audience was invited. Uh, questions were collected from the residents. Um, advertising was done. The technology, this is the first uh, forum that I've moderated that the library hasn't done the technology for the league. The technology is being handled in-house. It's just amazing. And so again, wherever your secret places are that you're listening to this, a real <laughs> round of applause to this wonderful League of Women Voters that you are so lucky to have in your area. Now they've asked me to remind everyone that links to this recording, as soon as it's ready, will be posted on their website. I'm gonna give you the letters, I don't expect you to remember them, but it's LWV for League of Women Voters hyphen, LF for Lake Forest, LB for Lake Bluff.org. But if you use Uncle Google and put in League of Women Voters of Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, you will find them. They have social media platforms. You'll be able to find them, especially on Facebook. We thank you so much, everyone, for participating as an audience member or as a candidate. Thank you for wanting to be an informed voter. I remind everyone that early voting starts on March 22nd. Mail-in ballots are, as they say, in the mail. Be sure to get yours back in a timely fashion. Um, election is on April 6th. Friends do not let friends stay home from election. <laughs> Please speak to everyone. See if someone needs a ride. See if someone needs some help. I'm going to applaud you out. And I assume at some point we can all stop smiling and we <laughs> stop the forum. So thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a great evening. Thank you.